everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight we are joined by the host of The Mark K Show and author of The Untold Story of Christmas. Of course, the man himself, Mark K. Mark, welcome to The Right View. Jazz to get you on. Um, just want to start out hot here. I heard you bribed your way into a job in radio. I mean, is that how we started out here? Let's go. Wow. Man, you went into the deep cuts of my bio. That's <laughs> yeah, but way back when Marconi developed the radio. No, I, uh, I, you know, I was working like most people. My first job was working at a restaurant in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and it was, you know, not my dream job. It was fun for a while, but it wasn't my dream job. I always, I studied communications in college, so I figured I should probably try to put that to at least try to put it to use although you do communicate a lot in the restaurant industry um but i you know i i just sent out my resumes to all the local radio stations and all the local tv stations and i may or may not have stolen some gift cards from the restaurant i worked at oh. and included them with my resumes and fun fact all of the quote unquote legitimate news organizations sent back my resume and the gift card and said we don't accept bribes but there was one radio station the guy was like this is my favorite restaurant thanks so much come on in and he hired me on the spot so you know i guess i was i guess i was meant to end up where i where i am as we all are we hope yeah, it worked out. It worked out. You know, I studied communications in uh, in college as well. And it's funny because yeah. I, it was one of those things where I was kind of like, what the heck am I going to do with this? And yeah. it's kind of crazy, Mark, how everything kind of came full circle and like, look yeah. at my life and how it's all panned out. But I love that we have that in common. That is great yeah. for us. It's worked out for you. You now host the Mark K show on radio. You have a weekly Newsmax show. Uh, you know, aside from sending out the gift cards to the radio stations, is that kind of what you had in mind whenever you went into college? Because I'll be honest with you, when I started college, I felt like there were too many directions that I wanted to go yeah. in. And I was like, uh, it was kind of terrifying. Did you always kind of have this in mind, though? You know, I always wanted to be in the film industry. I want to be a filmmaker. And that's oh. why I ended up I ended up at NYU, which was not the right school for somebody with my political leanings. Su uh, surprise, you, you know, came out alive, Mark. My God. Was, I know it really. You know what? It hardened me, Laura. It made me a little, a little, yeah. a little tougher. And it gave me four great years of debate experience because everywhere I turned, you know, I was debating somebody about politics. Those were back in the, that was the Bill Clinton years. Right. And, uh, and, and so I got a little bit of that Monica Lewinsky era. I got to hold my own. Uh, but, you know, after, after I graduated high school, or I rather, after I graduated college with my film degree, I realized the last place I wanted to go was California. So TV, radio, that seemed to be like something you could do everywhere. Little did I know, 20 years later, we'd all have movie studios right here in our pockets. Right. And I could just, I could do a podcast, I could do a TV show, I could do anything from anywhere. Um, and that's why I think, you know, so it, it ended up great. I think I'm exactly, like I said, where I need to be talking about politics, helping push conservatism, helping your father-in-law as we've been trying to do every single day for the past, past four years and doing it in a way that is entertaining and informative, just like you do. Amen. Well, I mean, I was going to ask if you always were interested in politics, but it sounds like all the way back into your college days, you certainly were. And by the way, like what a def different era that was. I feel yeah. really sad. I think for, for my kids who are young, they're four and six. So they have a long time until they may yeah. get into to college. Although I don't even know if a college degree will mean anything by the time my kids get into college, Mark. But it, it really is a different time, and I feel like it happened very rapidly that we went from being able to do probably what you did when you were at NYU, which is have a robust and, you know, mm -hmm. introspective debate. You could really talk about how you felt. You could allow other people to talk about how they felt. felt, And then you could go, like, get a cup of coffee or g grab lunch or something afterward. How did we end up like this, though? Because it really feels like we're in a completely different time, and it really hasn't been that long you know well you know the stronger conservatives got and your father-in-law is a big part of this president trump introduced to conservatives like me and to everybody else uh guts you know they didn't have those yeah. george bush was you know he was gutsy when it came to invading iraq but he wasn't gutsy when it came to handling the media or his detractors or democrats the same is true of a lot of elected in, uh, officials but having donald trump you know, look up at Jim Acosta in the White House and go, you are fake news. The rest of us were awoken <laughs> to like, wait a minute, we can say that kind of stuff? Oh. And all the conversations, yeah, like you said, we would argue uh, in the coffee shop, we'd argue in the fraternity house, we'd argue walking down the street to class. Uh, now we can do it on online and on the news and we can actually say what's on our minds. 
But the reason I think that it's become so polarizing is because at the stronger the Republicans have gotten, the stronger the conservatives have gotten with their pro-America message, the, the other side, the Democrats, they had no choice but to sharpen up their axes and sharpen their spears and just become more and more angry and more and more vitriolic and really just, just poke at us with everything they have. There is no, you know, there's no clocking in and clocking out and having a beer with them at the end of the day. It's 24 seven uh, vitriol from them. Yeah. And it just seems like they're so far off the deep end that it's, so, it's hard. So I mean, my, you know, what, what do we even have in common at some point? Like, I'm sorry, but if you really believe that a man should be competing against a woman in the sports arena, like yeah. if you really believe that it's, it's acceptable to go into Israel and slaughter Jewish people, I don't know. I, I kind of find it hard to find a, a bit of common ground. Um, but I, I'm kind of curious, Mark, you know, for me, I, anytime I have a chance to chat with yeah. people from different, maybe in a different, um, industry than I am or a different background or whatever it might be, I'm trying to get like a feel for what's going on in this country right now. I keep getting the sense that a lot of people are finally waking up, that a lot of people, even though they fe they fell for it with the Democrats, the little sleight of hand that they do, the jazz hands, as I like to say, like, oh, look over here, not over here. Yeah. The first time around when Donald Trump ran, maybe even in 2020, they voted for Joe Biden. I don't know that they're falling for it anymore because it's hard to fake things and say things are going great for people when people really are feeling it. And they're like, no, they're not. Things are not going great for me. What is your sense as to where we are in the country right now. I mean, it's 100 percent. People are waking. I mean, it almost has to get to a point where your personal life, your finances, your livelihood, your your future looks so grim under current leadership that you have no choice but to pay attention and make the switch. And that's exactly yeah. what's happening. We see it with the African-American community. We see it with Latino voters here. I know you're in South Florida. We're in North Florida, but it's all over the country. And you see it now. I mean, the Democrat Party has gone so far to the left that they are split with each other on this whole Palestinian debate with Israel. And and it, you know, when you have two people in the same party that can't agree on what the definition of terrorism or murder is, I mean, that's a party that people want to disassociate with themselves with. And I think you're going to see a lot of Jewish voters on the down low um, escaping the Democrat Party this time around as well. Thank God they have Taylor Swift to deliver the young girl vote <laughs> because they're definitely <laughs> they're going to need it this time around. Well, it's funny you say that because I feel like it's almost the only thing they have left. Are oh, the, yeah. the, it's like the small group of people who really, maybe their parents are taking care of things for them still. They're really not out there in the real world. Because anyone who's in the real world has really gotten smacked in the face by this economy, by so many of the bad decisions of this administration, by really the shock and awe of what you just talked about, the fact that you yeah. have a party right now mostly in power in, in this country who like, we don't really know where they stand. Do they support our strongest and oldest Middle Eastern ally? Do they feel like what happened on October 7th was justified? We don't really know where a lot of these people stand. They vote present instead of voting against anti-Semitism, really shocking stuff. Um, but yeah, all they've got left is Taylor Swift. I mean, until things go South uh, for the Kansas city, Chiefs. And then, you know, we, then all bets are off as far as I'm concerned. They're just going to take her down too. Um, as we're approaching Christmas, this is a time of year. I think people like to celebrate. They like to reflect on the year. They like to have maybe a new Christmas tradition. You have a book, uh, the untold story of Christmas. Tell us a little bit about it and why you wanted to release this book. Well, you know, this is something that was demanded by my audience, and I always listen to my audience because they're very demanding people. Um, it, you may not, you may remember when Rush passed away that I was given the honor of filling his time slot on half a dozen stations around the country, and the Mark K Show airs noon to three, which for 30 years was Rush's time slot. And that first year around Thanksgiving, people would call and say, do you remember Rush used to tell the true story of Thanksgiving, which was a very important story for Americans and a very important story for patriots. And it was a story that, of course, the left hijacked and bastardized and tried to turn into a racist tale of stuff that never actually happened. And I said, I love that story. And they asked me to tell it. And I said, absolutely not, because that was Russia's tradition. It was his story. You can find it on YouTube if you want. But it did make 
he realized that traditions are important. And there was a Christmas story that I'd heard through my church for years and I'd passed down to my children. And, and I started sharing it on the air a couple of years ago. And last year, finally, someone in the audience called and said, look, you have to write that down. I have to have a copy of it. So this year uh, we, we put together this book and it's the untold story of Christmas. It's the story of Jesus's birth, but it's told from a different perspective. It's told from the perspective of Caesar Augustus, who was the emperor of Rome at the time Jesus was born. And you know, a lot of people know Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem because there was a census. What they don't know is there was a census because Caesar Augustus wanted money to build a bunch of stuff that nobody needed. But before he could tax his citizens, he had to count them. And so the story of Christmas from that angle is a story about money and greed. Of course, we tie it back to Jesus Christ and goodwill and peace on earth. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a quick read. It's a fun story. It's something you've maybe never thought of before. And it's really inspirational. And everyone who's already gotten a copy and everyone who's heard it on my radio show, they really enjoy it. And we're going to continue to read it every year on the Mark K Show. But now you can actually get a copy and read it whenever you want. So the untold story of Christmas. Amazing. And where can people find it, Mark? It's available on Amazon, of course. If you go to my website, which is the untold story of Christmas.com, we make it easy for you. You can get uh, an autograph copy too, which is fantastic. A lot of people are enjoying that. The untold story of Christmas.com. I love it. We have a copy at the Trump household. So I'm going to recommend everybody go out there. I, I love it. I love bringing Christmas back. That's one thing we yeah. can thank Donald Trump for doing. He brought back Merry Christmas for a long time. People, I feel like we're afraid to say it. We weren't really sure what we were supposed to do. Everything had to be so PC. You can say Merry Christmas, Mark, to anyone, to people maybe who don't even celebrate Christmas necessarily. It's a warm greeting this time of year. You know what? I, I'm i not Jewish. If someone wishes me a happy Hanukkah, I'm going to celebrate that as well. I'm going to say, that's great. Thank you for that. We brought Christmas back and you can celebrate yeah. it in your own home with this book. I think it's great. Um, we are a few days before Christmas, but can you tell us who's currently leading the 2023 naughty list? Who is on track to be named the big winner and receive the 23 pounds of coal from Mark K? What do you have, Mark? I mean, I think it's pretty clear who the naughtiest person of 2023 <laughs> was. Joe Biden, since we oh. launched our poll, has been number one. What's a little surprising to me is who's in the second spot, and that is Jill Biden. Oh. Even higher, she's higher than Hunter. I mean, not in the, the traditional sense of being high, <laughs> but she's higher on the list than Hunter. No one's higher than Hunter. Uh, but no, Touché. she's higher than Hunter Biden on the list. She's higher than Alejandro Mayorkas. A lot of women especially are so offended by the way she's allowed her husband to be treated like a puppet by these evil people in Washington, D.C., how she hasn't protected his well-being that she's actually the second audience so either way depending when the final ballots are in the 23 pounds of coal which oh, i thought i had here they're over there uh the 23 pound bag of coal will be going to the white house in the name of either joe or jill biden i by the way i'm gonna have to agree with the audience on this yeah. one look you you almost obviously joe has been responsible for so many or so we think responsible yeah. for so many bad decisions as president really has taken the country in the wrong direction taking the world if you take a look around in the wrong direction but you know i i'll go a, a, a little bit on the same page as my father-in-law and whenever he talks about joe biden he almost talks about him in a way that he feels sorry for him because yeah. this guy really doesn't have all of his faculties about him. You can very clearly see that. My gosh, he can't even get off a stage for crying out loud. And so you got to say, like, who put him there? How did this work out? Who said this is a good idea for this guy to run? And then, yeah, the next obvious thing all the ladies out there know, all the wives out there know, is the wife. And it's right. Jill Biden. And what, yeah. what are they doing? How on earth? Did we get to a place like this where you have, I mean, someone who is a cognitive disaster as president of the United States? Mark, I, I don't know. I really feel like if we do not win in 2024, I truly don't know what the trajectory of the country and the world is. You know, there's one thing my father-in-law yeah. talks a lot about, and that's nuclear war. And if you look around Man, we're on the verge of World War III. You have, you know, Hamas and Israel. You have Ukraine and Russia. You got Ch China for mm -hmm. sure chomping at the bit to invade Taiwan. And I know they're all palling around together. Iran is in that mix. This is a really precarious time right now. And these are countries who have nuclear capabilities. And it really makes you think, 
wow, we could be in a dangerous spot. And I, honest to God, I really believe the only person who could rectify this situation is Donald Trump. What happens yeah. if, if, if he doesn't win in 2024, though? I think it's really scary. I mean, it is scary. What's scary is the only thing that's really holding us uh, away from the brink of war is that very, very slim majority in the House, which is getting slimmer by the day. Right. But you're you're 100 percent right. When you look at the wars that are be, that we're waging or that we're helping to wage around the country, it's the only single issue, Lauren, you know this, that Democrats, the majority of and a lot of Republicans agree on lockstep because they're all invested in this kind of uh, these kind of procedures. So when you have hardcore Republicans who've been in office for a very long time and the mo most of the Democrat Party agreeing that the Ukraine war and funding it inevitably or forever is a good idea and, you know, uh, it, it, siding with Hamas in some of these situations, that's a really scary step toward a world war. And that's something I think all Americans need to be cognizant of. Uh, uh, your well, father-in-law, your father-in-law coming back is, is you're right. The only thing that's going to save us at this point. Yeah, no, I, I think so. Um, you know, I, I do always have hope. I feel like people around this time of year, we're headed into the, a new year, a really big year. I feel like every four years, people are like, this is the most important election. I would argue this one right now is the most important election in modern history. We get this wrong. I really don't know that we're going to have many presidential elections after this yeah. one. And that's I'm not trying to be hyperbolic in any way. I really believe that. I think that's my father-in-law believes that too. And you look at the way they have targeted this one man. And I think it really has actually made people who may not have ever taken a second look at Donald Trump actually stop and say like, well, why? Why are they putting all their eggs in this basket going against Trump? Why are they targeting this one guy? Why right now? And I don't know, I'm I'm ready for 2024. I'm ready to, to hit the road and go hard. And look, this is the, the before the show, we were kind of talking about this, this is the third time around. For yeah, our family it, in a presidential election. Mark, I've known you for a long time. God, we go way back uh, yeah. several campaign cycles now. <laughs> That's right. Um, but it's it's kind of amazing. This is it's a really big year coming up. Any any mm -hmm. thoughts as we're heading in to 2024? It's a new year. A lot of people look at that as a fresh start. I hope we have a fresh start for our country come the end of 2024. What do you think about the upcoming year? Well, you know, when I'm traveling and we've already made our plans to be there in Wisconsin to watch your father-in-law on stage, we're going to see the president again. We're very excited. We're already making plans to travel up to New Hampshire. The one thing that every Republican needs to realize, every registered Republican needs to realize this, is that this is not the same election from 2016. It's no longer right. big fundraising dinners and attack ads on TV. That doesn't work. It's all about who gets the most votes. And the Democrats know how to get the most votes. And you may not like the fact that Election Day now now spans two, three, four weeks in some parts of the country. But if you don't play the game that we're playing, you're going to lose. And once we get control back, we can change it back to Election Day. I know that Donald Trump is a big proponent of that, as are the rest of us. But you've got to wake up to the fact that if there's early voting, you should probably vote early. If you need to mail in your ballot or help harvest ballots where it's, a, where it's legal, you need to do that because the Democrats, they are not going to stop at anything, anything this time around. Because just like you said, Laura, this is it. If they can get over this one yeah. hurdle, if they can keep power they've changed the country forever it's one more it's one more road uh, speed bump for them for the rest of us it's the republic so we got to get out there and do what we need to do i i'm ready to go i i i thank you by the way for all that you do uh to fight for this country because nothing is more important I want my kids to be able to grow up in the same country I grew up in. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It's really about keeping America, the country we always have been, keeping it great for the next generation and generations to come. So thanks for all you do. I mean, you you really go out and you work hard and you're exactly right. We got to play the game differently this time around. And I'm just going to leave everyone with this little nugget. If everyone remembers how sweet it was on in the, the wee hours of November 9th, 2016, this is whenever we were waiting for Pennsylvania to be called mm -hmm. and for Donald Trump to officially be named president elect this time around, it's going to be even sweeter because yeah, we caught him off guard the first time. The second time, no no doubt there was some funny business that went down. 81 million Americans were not so inspired by a guy campaigning out of his basement, Mark, that they were no. like, let's all go vote for him and, and break records in terms of voting. Um, this time around, though, I just want everybody to think about how incredible it's going to be when Donald Trump wins this time around. Mm -hmm. That's what we're banking on. That's what we're waiting for. And I'll tell you 
people in my family, all of us from myself, my husband, my brother-in-law, all of us, all the way to my father-in-law, we didn't just get in this for four years or eight years. This is this is forever for us. We are always going to fight for this country. And now is the time when we really have to go out there hard. So, Mark, I just want to say again, thank you for all you do. Thank you for fighting like you do. Thank you for joining us here on The Right View. Remind everybody before we go really quickly where they can find you, where they can listen to you. How, how do we see more of you, Mark? Yeah, well, thank you, and thanks for all you guys do, too. We're here fighting, and we're praying for you every day. Uh, best thing to do is go to your search engine and type in Mark K, K-A-Y-E. We broadcast across the nation on radio, Newsmax TV. We're on the weekends, the Mark K Show, and we're streaming everywhere, Rumble and, and X and everywhere else. So Mark K with an E on the end, and uh, you should be able it's, – it's harder to avoid me than it is to find me <laughs> at this point. So. <laughs> well, and I know the Democrats love that. You're the greatest, yeah. Mark. Thanks for everything. We will see thanks, you Laura. soon. Thanks. Thanks for joining us here on The Right View. To all everybody at home, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. We'll see you back here next time for more. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it. So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple Watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple Watch cases I could find, and I found it. Goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches, as you can see here. Everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara T, L-A-R-A-T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need, goldandcherry.com. Use promo code Lara T so you can get yourself one of these today too. My name is Lara Trump and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. If you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code Trump, again, promo code Trump, you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. If you're listening right now and you want to get these products, go to OrganicBodyEssentials.com. Use promo code TRUMP. Save yourself a little bit of money and do something great for your skin. One way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. If you want to get yourself some Kingdom Fuel protein powder as well, go to Sherwood.tv. You can use promo code TRUMP when you check out for a little bit of savings, and you're going to get a delicious, great protein powder to fuel you through your day.